Our next guest says, quote, nothing compares to Russia when it comes to corruption and government interference. Bill Browder is founder and CEO of Hermitage Capital Management. His $1.2 billion hedge fund was the biggest investor in Russian stocks until he was labeled a threat to national security and banned from the country. He's with us now from Bloomberg's London Bureau. Bill, great to have you. Uh, let's talk about the comparison between Russia and China. Everybody has their knickers in a knot over China because of Google's experience, not just with censorship, but also with spying. Your experience in Russia suggests that maybe uh, that people ought to be thinking about Russia, and if they are thinking about Russia as a place not to invest, correct? Well, I, I guess the best way to explain my thoughts is to tell you my story. Um, uh, as you said, I was the largest investor in Russia for about 10 years. I had about $4 billion invested in the country. Um, and, and I was uh, finding myself in a lot of corporate governance disputes with companies like Gazprom and various other companies. And so we would research how they um, ended up uh, 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 taking money out of the companies and management, and then we would publicize it. And that got a lot of people angry, and they ended up kicking me out of the country as a threat to national security in 2005. And then uh, in 2007, my offices in Moscow were raided by the police. They took away the documents that were, we used to um, have our investment holding companies in that country. And then after the documents were taken, our companies were stolen right out from under us. And then the next thing we knew, through a complicated scheme, the police, in conjunction with some mafia criminals, had taken the taxes that we had paid two years earlier and got a refund in one day from, from the government. So they had basically stolen our companies to steal $230 million of taxes that we paid. Uh, Bill, you, you We then also, hired a bunch. I was just going to say, you also have a horrific part of this story with a lawyer that you hired who you say was taken by police, jailed, and tortured to death. Yeah, let, let me tell that part of the story. So after all this stuff happened, we went out and hired um, seven lawyers from four different law firms to help us unravel what was going on, what this mess was all about, and, and so on and so forth. And, um, and a after we hired the lawyers and we filed criminal complaints naming the police officers, um, the, um, uh, the police then opened up criminal cases against all seven lawyers. Six of them left the country, but one young lawyer, a man named Sergei Magnitsky, he was 36 years old, he said, I'm not going to leave the country because I've done nothing wrong. And he went and further, uh, very bravely, testified against the police officers who had been involved in this big crime. One month later, those same police officers arrested him, put him in pretrial detention, and then started torturing him. And he was in pretrial detention for a year and a half, I mean, I'm sorry, for 11 and a half months. Um, they kept on putting more and more pressure on him. His health started to deteriorate. And on November 16th last year, he died at the age of 37 in prison after being tortured. Bill, Bill were you in contact with him while he was in prison? Um, only via his lawyer, but we got, uh, he, every day while he was in prison, because he was such a clear-thinking lawyer, he wrote down what happened, and he wrote 450 different complaints during his 358 days and in detention. And those pages didn't disappear? Those pages went out every day that he wrote them, and so we have an absolute perfect documentation of what happened to him in prison, and it's the most horrific, heartbreaking story you can ever hear about how a, a person can be treated. And this is what they did to this man because he stepped in the way of their corruption, of government corruption at the highest level. Bill, it's a harrowing tale, not unlike what we heard a couple of months ago from Jamie Firestone. And clearly, from your perspective, it is a warning to investors. But let's put ourselves in the shoes of investors for a moment. What should people keep in mind when they're contemplating an investment in Russia? The MySex Index has appeared to have done very well for people, up more than 60% on an annual basis in five of the past 10 years. So people are inclined to invest there. They see opportunity. Well, I mean, it, within that, within those uh, sixty percent up and 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 so on, you also have a couple of years where it's down eighty percent. Um, I mean, uh, R Russia prevents, uh, presents huge opportunities at certain times. I mean, my, I went out there. Uh, I went out there in nineteen ninety six and set up my business. And my big premise was that the place was horrible, but it was on the transition to bad. And that um, if you invested in a place going from horrible to bad, and hopefully to good at some point, that there would be money to make and, and you could also feel good about the transition. But now what I see is on a trans transition from bad back to horrible. And so um, you have to have stuff be pretty damn cheap there before it makes sense to own it. Now, I, I, I can only say that, that Russia, I, I've traveled now to 27 different countries since I got kicked out of Russia looking at emerging markets. 
And I've never seen any, any country that has corruption on the order of magnitude of Russia. It's just a completely different story in Russia. Let's talk about where you are putting your money now. Of course, you say that uh, you find no other country more corrupt than Russia to do business in. India, Indonesia, Thailand. If you had to put any one of those countries on a scale one to ten, how do they compare to Russia as far as corruption goes? Well, if you say Russia, if you say ten is the most corrupt, then Russia is an eleven. And, um, and then it, it really depends. I mean, uh, in, in India, for example, you have a proper legal system. There, there, certainly people will, when you're, when you're meeting with management, they might exaggerate, they might lie, there might be um, that kind of stuff. But you're never going to have your assets stolen from right out under you. Um, and, and if there's some type of dispute, you can actually go to a court. It might take a long time to resolve it. Whereas in Russia, on the other hand, um, you have a dispute and you go to court and you find your, your lawyer in jail and, and being tortured. And, and so it's just a completely different order of magnitude. What I can say is that all emerging markets are, are, have, have their issues, um, but nothing um, uh, relates or has issues like, like it does in Russia. And it's very interesting because I go around and, I, and when, I, when I go to these countries, I tell them my story in, in different countries. And I say, can anything like this ever happen in your country? And people look at me like I'm out of my mind to even think that Bill, something like that could happen. don't you expect them to lie to you, though? I mean, they want foreign capital. Um, of course, everybody wants capital, but it all depends. I mean, uh, you know, I can, uh, I mean, I, I go around and I tell the story about how, the, how my visa was taken away. And, and in Brazil, they say that couldn't possibly happen, no, no matter who I talk to there. Whereas, uh, you know, in, in Russia, lots of people lose their visas for, for challenging uh, corruption or challenging the government. And so, of course, people do exaggerate, people do lie, but you can tell... Uh, by any objective measure, for example, Transparency International has ranked Russia, I think, 141 out of 180 countries in terms of corruption. It places it on par with a number of, of uh, African countries. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the only one saying this. I mean, basically, if you, if you go around and you, and you read the, the news clips of different companies' experiences, you have BP, you have Shell, you have Ikea, you have Telenor, you have News Corp, all have, have had the same type of, of expropriation type of situations in Russia that I've had. Uh, a lot of people won't come onto a show like this but, um, and, and say what I'm saying, but they've all had the experience. Bill, we wish you a lot of luck. We thank you for joining us. Bill Browden from Hermitage Capital Management.